Hey everyone, Jeff here again for VIP Vision. Now, I hope this hasn't happened to you, but I suspect it probably has. You're configuring a network video recorder with an IP camera, you've got a long run, okay? So you've got a, you know, maybe a 60 or 70 meter cable run. Uh, through a difficult to reach either duct or possibly pulling it through a ceiling or something like that, you spend half the day pulling the cable through and you get to the end of the day and you start to terminate the cable and you terminate it and great, terminate it on one side, terminate it at the recorder side and you plug it in and you wait and you wait some more and you wait some more and yet we get nothing. No camera, no camera on screen at all. And you start getting that sinking feeling of, oh dear, what if it's the cable? What am I gonna do? I don't have time to rerun another one. Well, you might have an out. I might have a get out of jail free card for you there. So the first thing that we need to obviously determine is whether it is the cable at all. Maybe it's a camera problem. Maybe it's an IP addressing problem or something like that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove my camera. So unmount my camera, I'm gonna disconnect it and then I'm going to connect it using a standard patch lead directly to my recorder. So I'm going to plug that into the recorder here. And then we're just going to see if that comes up like that. But in the meantime, I suspect it's probably the cable. So obviously it's a little different to this if we're, if we're running it through a roof if the cable's already run through, but at least you have, you have your camera ends and you have your recorder ends. Now, First thing, very important thing to do in a situation like this, um, obviously you wanna be waiting to see if that camera comes up first before you go do anything too drastic. So we'll just cut across there and we'll just wait for that camera to appear. Just to verify that it is indeed the cable that's at fault. Okay, so the camera appears to be working just fine. So that means it's very likely our cable that is the problem. Obviously it could be our terminations. Um, Re-terminating the cable is a good thing to test um, just in case. But before you do anything like that, um, it's very handy to have a cable tester on hand. Now, this is the VIP Vision VS Test 101 or 110, I should say. Um, you don't need anything quite this fancy, but it is quite useful in situations like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just jump across to another camera here. Okay, I'm gonna wake the device up. I'm gonna push this recorder out of the way a little bit so that you can see. There we go. Okay, so this device actually has a cable testing mode. You could be using something a little more basic, obviously. Um, you don't necessarily need to use anything quite this fancy. So, cable tester. So this is gonna tell me um, whether my cable is in fact the problem. I suspect it is given that the camera's working. So I'm gonna to connect to it now. So connect in the base here and I'm gonna to connect to my remote device. So this side would be at the camera typically. Okay, I'm gonna connect there and I'm gonna turn it on. Okay, so this cable tester is telling me some information that I probably already suspected that unfortunately we have some broken wires in this cable. Now, this one's actually quite bad because we're missing a whole pair. We're missing our first pair entirely and we're missing um, our one of the wires out of our sixth of our sixth pin down there, which is our third pair. So that's quite quite a lot of broken wires, but there is a saving grace here in the sense that you can probably see if I brighten that back up again, you can see that we actually have our blue pair intact and we have our brown pair intact. Okay, so we still have two pairs. Now, why that's good is even though we still have some broken wires in that cable, um, in fact, PoE or Power Over Ethernet devices uh, from VIP Vision, such as this recorder here and this VIP Vision camera, will work perfectly fine on just two pairs. Okay, they don't actually require the other two pairs, like they don't need all four pairs to function. So what that means is in fact, we can modify our cable or modify our termination rather than the cable, I should say, to use those pairs that aren't broken in order to fix this problem. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect it from the recorder side, which I've done, and disconnect it from the camera side, obviously, which I'd already done. And now I'm going to remove this termination that I've done here, and I'm gonna re-terminate this cable. Okay, so. This will take some time, obviously, but it should take far less time than re-terminating or re-pulling the entire cable. There we 
bear with me while I trim this off here. Okay, so that's the first side trimmed. I'm going to remove it from the second side now. Okay, so now I've exposed, exposed these two Cat5 cables here. Now, as we, we were looking at before, okay, we noticed that we actually had broken pairs, or broken, a broken cable on our first and our third pair here. Okay, so first and third, um, that's our green-white-green green and our orange-white-orange orange. both actually have broken pairs. So what we need to do, these are the ones that are typically actually used within the cable for our cameras. We don't actually even use the brown and the blue pair typically. So what we're going to do is we're going to move our orange, white and orange and our green, white and green out. We're not going to use those at all. Okay. Off both sides. And we're going to, in their place, within the termination, we're actually going to use our blue, white, blue and our brown white brown and just to just briefly show you here so this is the pinout of uh, how this actually works just to give you an idea of what's what's going on here so our cameras actually use um, 10 100 mode a mixed dc and data so as you can see our rx positive and our dc positive rx negative dc negative are on our green pair okay and our transmit positive dc negative and transmit negative dc negative here are on our orange pair okay orange pair if you're doing uh, doing um, uh, standard A and green pair if you're doing standard B but my point is that everything's on the orange and green wires typically okay so as discussed we just so happen to have these two pairs here that are just fine so we're going to use our blue pair in place of our green pair and we're going to use our brown pair in place of our orange pair. So that's what I'm going to do now, okay? I'm going to take those two out, okay, as I mentioned, and I'm actually going to use the blue and the brown. So, we'll just do this as quickly as we can. Obviously everything's a little bit more difficult to do when you're on video. So, as I mentioned, they're going to come out like that. And we're going to get rid of these pairs here entirely because these two, these ones are actually broken. As we mentioned, these are totally broken. So we're going to get rid of them completely of both sides. So that we're just left with our two pairs. Okay, our blue pair and our brown pair. Okay, so... It doesn't really matter which pair we put first. All, all that really matters is that, as mentioned before, pin one, pin two, pin three, and pin six are together, or are, are wired, and that pin one and pin two are on the same pair, and that pin three and pin six are on the same pair. It's critical that you get the pairs lined up, okay? You don't split pairs. You must have one pair in pin one and two, and a separate pair in pin three and six, okay? Never go and take, you'll never, never do anything like saying, oh, well, I've only got one broken wire, so I'll take out the white wire and replace it with the, you know, white, green, white, for instance, and replace that with the brown, white. You can't do that. You must take a complete pair. Even if there's only one wire broken within the pair, you must take a complete pair. Okay, so we're gonna do that now. So in this case, I'm gonna go Brown, white, brown. Brown, white, brown. And then blue, white, blue. Okay, so these first three, obviously pin one, two, and three. Okay, and then this one here is gonna be pin six. Now it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to terminate our cat 
connection or RJ45 connection, I should say, like this, because it's basically, it's going to have to go like, I'm not going to do it like this exactly, but it's going to have to go here. So these three will be the first one. And then this one here, this little blue guy here is going to actually have to be in pin six. Okay. So if you count six along from this connection here, it's going to have to be in number six. So let's do that. Now I'm going to trim those back a little bit. Now, as always, it's important to get them exactly the same length if we can. Now I'm going to leave quite a bit of uh, tail here. Obviously, normally you would make this a little bit shorter. You want to untwist as little as possible. And then we're going to go in like so. So being very careful to get them in the right spots. Okay. So remember one, two, three, skip two, and then one. Okay, that one there looks all right. So it might be a little bit difficult to see there, but I actually have, I have brown, white, brown, blue, white, gap, gap, blue. Okay, so brown, white, brown, gap, brown, white, brown, blue, white, gap, gap, blue. One, two, three, and six. Okay, so I'm gonna terminate that now. Just crimp it down, make sure that everything is in exactly the right spot before you do it, because otherwise you're gonna have to chop this off and start again. Okay. Okay, so it's a pretty average looking crimp on here. Normally you would wanna make sure that you get more insulation up in here, but I think for this particular demo, it's not too bad. It's gonna be more difficult obviously than it is to normally to do one of these because we've removed them. So. That one there is now done. I just need to do the other side, do exactly the same thing on the other side. So as mentioned, I did brown, white, brown, blue, white, gap, gap, blue. So brown, white, brown, blue, white, and then gap, gap, blue. Do the hula. Just trim this back a little bit more. Make it slightly easier. Just to crimp. Okay. There we go. I'm going to trim that back as we did before. Okay. Okay, so brown, white, brown, blue, white, gap, gap, blue. So one, two, three, and six, just like we did a moment ago. Okay, so that one's also okay. Okay, and this one's a little bit better than the one previously. Okay, so brown, white, brown, blue, white, gap, gap, blue is good. Okay, so I'm going to crimp that one down. Okay, great. So hopefully that's fixed our problem because we now, as mentioned before, we have a wire in pins, well, a pair in pin one and two and a pair in pin three and six. Okay, I can't emphasize enough just how important it is to make those, make sure that those pairs do not get split. Okay, anytime that you end up with split pairs, it's not gonna work. It will definitely be a problem. If it's not a problem right now, it will definitely be a problem in the long run. Okay, so let's just plug this back into our tester just to verify what we've actually done here. Make it back up again. Okay, so now as you can see, we have, oops, switch back across to another monitor so you can see, we now have a wire in pin one, pin two, pin three, and pin six. And we don't have anything in pins four and five or seven and eight. But that's, as I mentioned before, that's perfectly fine since we're not actually gonna use those wires. 
Okay, so now, moment of truth, let's give it a go on a camera. So this is the same camera as we had before, as obviously you can see it is still functioning normally as you would expect, working just fine. So now, I'm going to switch back across to our other cable. And obviously it's a little bit different in the field given that, you know, I'd have to walk this camera back out and connect it back up. But needless to say, you can see that that camera has gone dead whilst I've unplugged it. Now I'm just going to plug it back in as normal. Same port on the recorder. So, now we play the waiting game. We just hope that everything is good. But given our test from earlier, I think we'll be just fine. It's worth noting that obviously this is not, not the only thing that can go wrong with cables. This will not work every time, okay? Um, if, for instance, you've got a, a PTZ camera and it's at a long distance, you might struggle. This, this will work with standard cameras out to 100 meters without too many issues. It will not work with extended PoE, okay? So situations like that, extended PoE actually uses all four pairs. So in situations like that, this will not work. Um, it will not work for gigabit ethernet, okay? For gigabit ethernet, if you need gigabit ethernet, this will not work. This will only work for 100 megabit. It will work just fine though for data as well. Like, so if it's just data, you're not actually using power over ethernet, this technique will work. Um, it will not work with all switches, okay? Because some network switches will only support, um, as we mentioned before, some network switches will only, only support PSE mode B, okay? And mode B, essentially means that it's, it's only going to supply power on the unused pairs. This will not fix that problem. However, there are some slightly different ways of getting around that if you have to, but, but in saying that, this will work just fine for VIP Vision cameras on VIP Vision recorders without issue. So, did it work? Let's have a look. Hooray! Great, so we've got, we've fixed our camera, we've fixed our problem. Now, obviously this is, this is going to work just as fine, just fine as it, as it did before. There's not going to be any additional lag or anything like that. It's quite fluid. I flip back. You'll see this is over about 30 meters of cable. Um, this should work just fine, as I mentioned, out to about 100 meters. Don't attempt it with extended PoE. Don't attempt it with gigabit. So yeah, um, I hope that's been helpful. I hope that it's it's, you know, going to help in certain situations if you run into, like I said, it's a bit of a jet out, get out of jail free card in the sense that it's probably not ideal because you're not really following any standard codes at this point, but certain situations, it's, it's a requirement, it's a fact of life, you're going to have to do things like this. Um, some advice, you should definitely be labeling whatever you've done so that the next person that comes along to it doesn't look at it and go, oh, what the hell did that guy do? Um, label it, make sure that there's some documentation as to what you've done, why you've done it that way. Um, but yeah, there should be no problems with this long term, not an issue. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, comments, please leave them below. Anything you'd like to see, um, certainly let us know and we'll get endeavour to get some videos done for you for that. Thanks for watching.